to Dennis Cosgren on this particular, what is it here? Okay, it's in a cube. Okay, the most familiar cubic thing that in chemistry is sodium chloride, ordinary table salt. And the reason it comes in a cube is because the sodium and the chloride are arranged in a three-dimensional checkerboard where they alternate sodium chloride, sodium chloride in three different directions. Okay, this has almost exactly the same structure, except two differences. One, it's iron and sulfur instead of sodium and chloride. And second, instead of just a single nice spherical chloride ion, it's a disulfide ion where the two sulfurs are connected to each other by covalent bonding. And that still makes it come into a cube because of the general arrangement, but because the sulfur sulfide is a linear molecule, it destroys the symmetry and this particular crystal has striations that run across along the one pair of cube edges so it no longer has a four-fold symmetry here but a two-fold symmetry and that's a reflection of the shape of the disulfide but the general shape of the crystal is the same as that of table salt because the structure is almost identical to that of table salt would you like to write maybe the structure on your oh. paper, please? Yeah, yeah, show, show the student what is it. And so forth, and so forth, yes. and then the same so thing forth. coming out in the, in the third dimension. Except yeah. that, as I say, instead of these nice round chloride ions uh -huh. and sodium ions, we have iron and disulfide running like running like this the bonding is fun too uh, you don't read about the bonding in this one in regular textbooks mm -hmm. because it is not quite pure anything. It's partly covalent, it's partly ionic, and partly metallic. So it's in between all three of the main types of bonding. Awesome. So this is a this is a chemistry course right here. Exactly. Wow, thank you sir. Anything else to wrap up? Well I could say it's the commonest sulfide that uh -huh. you can find. Any, any rock you look at, if you look really closely, you're likely to find little pieces of gold in it. Oh. Well, it's fool's gold. This is the main fool's gold. In fact, there's a nice story about, uh, let's see, Martin Frobisher, who was an English explorer back in the 1500s, and he was searching through, looking through Hudson's Bay to try to find the Northwest Passage. And of course, he had the right idea. That's where you go for the Northwest Passage, except that at that time it was frozen solid. You couldn't get through. But while he was there, he found this big deposit of nice, bright yellow metallic stuff. And he thought he was rich. So he loaded up with a couple of tons of this stuff and brought it back to England, all ready to get make his fortune from gold. Except it was this stuff. It was fool's gold. So he brought it into the assayer, and the assayer told him it was worthless. Well, he went back on a second expedition, still trying to find the Northwest Passage, and came and found more nice bright yellow stuff. He said, ah, this time I got it. No, it was the same damn fool's oh, goal. Oh, oh, now, <laughs> the first time he did it, it was ignorance. He didn't know how to tell them apart. Gold from fool's gold. The second time was sheer stupidity because yeah. it turns out what he should have done the first time around is ask the assayer, well, how do you tell the difference? And it turns out it's very easy. If you take this stuff and hit it with a hammer, I refuse to do that with this nice crystal, but if you do, it'll shatter uh -huh. into, into, little, into powder. Gold will just flatten. Second, mm. you take this and scratch it on a piece of, of uh, unglazed porcelain or the nearest handy rock, mm -hmm. and it leaves a black mark. Mm. Gold would leave a bright golden mark. That's the test. This uh -huh. is hard, uh, hardness six, 
or hardness, not almost enough to scratch glass. To the, to the not finger quite. scales. Uh, to the index finger scale. Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot harder than your fingernail. Oh, okay. Gold is softer than your fingernail. So there's three different ways, none of which require any special equipment. And he could have saved himself an awful lot of work. <laughs> Second time at least, as I say, that one was stupidity. Wow. That's good for the day. There you go. Thank you, Dr. Koskrin. You're very Koskrin. welcome. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Till next time, the mystery. <laughs> <laughs>